Oh, look how they massacred my boy. No! This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to F1 Manager 23. Rather than doing a playthrough and a review of the game and just saying that it's exactly like F1 Manager 22 or that this was a cash grab or anything like that, I'm actually just going to do some uh, performance benchmarking, benchmarking per se, where I'm going to show you how this runs on the Steam Deck specifically with you know low, medium, high ultra settings and kind of give you a feel of what this game would best run in as far as which kind of presets is best for you using the Steam Deck. I also wanted to show off a little bit of a disclaimer here. There is no such thing as low graphic settings according to F1 Manager 23. You have medium, high, ultra, and when you expect to go back down to low, it brings it back down to medium. So immediately, let's start out with ultra here. We're in the middle of a practice session, and if we go over to our speed up kind of bird's eye view, there's not a lot of graphics going on. So like here, you're getting a solid, you know, 45 FPS here. Again, these are ultra settings, everything maxed out. But when we kind of turn it down a little bit and follow our race car, the graphics in general are not ideal like even it, that it is quote-unquote ultra it's i believe it's the fact that the steam Deck's gpu just can't handle the the graphics of the game that it's trying to push out here so i'll, I'll show some the footage that i captured before like the driver's quality when you're selecting teams and whatnot was absolutely horrendous and it wasn't great in an f122 but I think on ultra settings on the Steam Deck, it's probably pushing it a little bit too much for, for getting that. The interesting thing with this game is a game that is not necessarily like you're a racing game, so you need high frame rates. Honestly, if you lock this game at 30 FPS, you're probably doing pretty okay. And I should actually change right here. I even have VSync on. So let me turn off VSync and see if this changes much as far as our frame rate goes and by the looks of it here not really still looks like it's doing the same thing that it was before which is good so watching through this footage here i found it interesting that uh, ultra quality had potentially the most consistent frame rate where it was stuck anywhere between 22 and 24 like dead rock solid centered and I don't know whether it was due to changing the settings of the game and not opening the game or closing it and then reopening it. I found it that the frame rates for both the medium and the high settings to be kind of all over the place, and especially at the beginning of the lab. Again, that could have do been due to the fact that I just changed the graphics settings. With the medium settings, you can expect anywhere between 35 and 40 frames, on average about 38. And with the high settings, you can expect 28 to 30. So keep this in mind right now. This is one of those games that you're not going to get a solid 60 FPS at low settings. So just keep in mind if you're using this or the Steam Deck to turn on potentially the frame rate or the refresh rate limiter and just set it at 40 and play around with the settings maybe a little bit. You might be able to get up to 40 every now and again on medium settings if you really care about frame rate. But at the same time too, the graphical difference between medium, high, and ultra, especially on Steam Deck, looks to be pretty negligible. So if you're looking at following all the cars and seeing all the details on the track, honestly, for the Steam Deck, medium is probably going to be a good spot because it gets you the highest frame rate. And the, again, the difference between medium, high, and ultra graphics are pretty negligible. Comparing the frame rate once again with some of these menus, this looks like that uh, medium is about 34 on average, high is about 28 on average, and ultra is you know about 22 on average 
so again, and we're just sitting in a menu, and you can't really tell a whole lot what's going on in the background. The the graphics quality difference between the three of them is again not very significant. So again, medium looks pretty good. Now watching back some of this footage here, this is something very interesting as well in my mind, because with the high and the ultra settings in this kind of bird's eye view, there really aren't many that differences that you'll see. Both are running between 97 and 99% of the GPU, running between 46 and 49% of the CPU, and with high, it is averaging about 50 frames a second, and on ultra, it's about 43 frames per second. When we swap everything down to medium settings, you can notice here that the GPU is, you know, high 80s, low 90s, and the CPU actually has quite a huge fluctuation. It goes anywhere from as low as about 41% all the way back up to where it was at about 48% on the high side that we'd be seeing with both the uh, high and the ultra settings. Now, the interesting thing as well is that since running this in the medium settings, we have had a rock steady 60 frames a second. I think part of it may do, like, the, as you can tell, the graphical differences between medium, high, and ultra in this view are basically non-existent. It's all basically the same graphics, and there's not a whole lot to be showing at the moment. However, I think the difference is that in order to be able to swap views, it's queuing up the graphics of watching the cars on the track in the background, utilizing some additional performance, where in here, because there's less graphics and less assets and less textures with the medium settings, it's easier for it to swap into that view, making it a higher frame rate for this view. So again, we swap over and immediately we'll drop like 20 frames a second. And then we come back and we're back at the solid 60 frames a second. So I, I guess there is some queuing up that this game is doing. But long story short, I find it interesting how much performance that the medium settings pre preset is saving by not having to load in all those extra textures and all the extra assets for when you swap to the race view. When all in all, what we're seeing here is no different between any of the other three presets. I'd like to see the difference between when you're on medium settings and you go from this view to the track, how many frames you're losing or what kind of performance uh, increase that you're getting from doing that swap over. And again, seeing the same thing with high and in ultra. All in all, as you can tell, when you're following all three of these is when you're going from that bird's eye view to when you're down on the track action, you're losing a significant amount of performance. It's close to about half across the board. We're starting at 60 and then going down to 35 and coming back up to an average of 38 on the medium preset. We're starting at about 50 on the high preset. It goes down to about 25 and comes up to an average of 28. And then finally with Ultra, this one was very interesting where it starts at about 43, goes down to about 23, and then comes up to about 25, and then reaches up to 28, and has these wild fluctuations between 22 and 28. So again, if you're looking for rock solid frame rate, my thought process is if you use a lot of this, you know, diving in and out between the menu or the bird's eye view and then the on track kind of viewage perspective i would definitely choose something more medium and then limiting the frame rate to about 40 or 30 and then just l letting it go from there if you do a lot of flipping back and forth on the steam deck between those if you don't do it a whole lot honestly still choose medium because you're getting you can actually remove that frame light rate limit and get a rock steady 60 frames a second on the Steam Deck when you're in that bird's eye view. So again, it kind of depends what your type of play style is, but all in all, it looks like when you're in the mode of racing that you should definitely just use medium. 
Of course, that's another disclaimer. This Steam Deck is quote unquote in docked mode and it's outputting through uh, HDMI into a video mixer. So it's not in handheld mode at all, which I imagine that there will be some performance differences when you're not plugged in versus when you are. So by the looks of it so far, Medium is a clear winner just as far as that it's not pushing the Steam Deck unnecessarily. And it looks like that has a very good consistent frame rate that you can kind of play with as far as where your preference is. So that being said, you can kind of tell generally what I've been thinking through the results of the previous little tests that I have. And all in all, my final answer is that medium is definitely going to be the best settings on Steam Deck for F1 Manager 23. I, again, I'll... I'll be riffing on the fact that it may not be well optimized or you know that there's some really weird fluctuations graphically speaking between certain views or certain different settings but at the same time you know this is a handheld gaming pc and you can play around with different settings to get something that may be more up your alley but because of the fact that it's on such a small screen the difference in quality between the different graphical settings i don't know what the case is with with frontier it just seems at least with running on the steam deck it just seems like that there is really not much a difference in graphical settings so it's like what's what's the point of pushing the steam deck for a game that you're going to be looking at this you know the most of the time so medium all the way absolutely all the way Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this content, you know, let me know down in the comment section down below. I know this is definitely not something usual, me benchmarking, benchmarking recent racing games on the Steam Deck. But let me know your thoughts if you like this, if you want me to do more of this, if you want me to go into more detail in other sides of the benchmarking. Or if you think that I just didn't do a good enough job and should leave it for Digital Foundry, which is also fair. But of course, let me know all your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. I've been Matt. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day today. Take care. Bye.